Hey everybody, welcome to Evil Ted's Coffee Talk. This is installment two. My special guest is Nick uh, Ket Ketman. Nick Ketman. Modulus Props. <laughs> Nick Ketman of Modulus Props. Nick came all the way out to Los Angeles. What brought you to Los Angeles, Nick? So I'm in town for the Monster Palooza Convention. Wow, Monster Palooza Convention, which is huge. Yeah, it's awesome. It's three days of monster making and sculpting and foam fabrication and tons of industry people and I'm just kind of walking around in in awe of the whole thing. So that's my my first one, and and it's I think I'm I'm sold. I will be back every year for this convention. It it is a very cool. What I like about Monster uh, Palooza is that the uh, it's an industry thing, and a lot of uh, young makers and build, uh, other people who are in the industry and costume makers and sculptors and artists come out and display it. But also the industry that does all the materials and silicones and casting urethane and stuff. Have booths as well, the pushing their uh, their wares. It's very right. Cool. Yeah. So you can see everything from the materials that you need to make this stuff, all the way on through finished pieces. You know, tons of famous industry people will do like little resin kits that you can buy there. You know, and people have full size costumes on display and just lots of amazing stuff. Super fun. Great. So now, with that being said, what was it, what was it that appealed to you to bring? Like you said, I want to see these things in person, you want to buy materials, do you want to see other people's work, is that what drove you out here? Yeah, I came mostly to see other people's work. Well, Nick, the big burning question, the main reason I have Coffee Talk is that uh, I'm also a fellow maker, I want to know what got you into making your own stuff, what was the your your journey, what was it, because I know when I was a kid I wanted stuff and learned from Chrome, but what was, the, when did you realize you could actually make something? Well, actually not until recently, so maybe uh, three or four years ago is when I got sort of back into making props. And I used that to be, early? Yeah, that, that recently. So I haven't been doing it for very long. I used to do, like you and like a lot of other kids, I would make, um, you know, build model kits and things as a kid, was into drawing and all sorts of artsy stuff. And then by day I'm an engineer. So once oh. I kind of got to school, all that sort of went away. And I focused on the engineering and sort of lost the artistic side of my brain, sort of got shut down a little bit. Right. Uh, but a few years ago, some friends of mine were getting married and they were having a reception that was a, a basically a costume party. So I was looking around for a costume to make and at the time I was playing through this uh, video game called Borderlands. Oh, super super popular, cool. lots of crazy character designs and we were joking that I should go as the, the Psycho Bandit character, which is this crazy shirtless guy with this big creepy mask. I did not end up going as that character because <laughs> it probably wouldn't have been appropriate for the for the wedding. But I started looking around at what were people making these costumes, and of course the answer is yes. I think the first thing I came across was our buddy Stephen K. Smith. Right. He had done the mask for that Psycho Bandit, so I, I found his stuff, and then I you know started. That was like my gateway into all this stuff. Like started watching Adam Savage build videos on right. tested. Excellent. Found. Uh, Bill and Britt are friends at Punish Props. Good. Found you. So, yeah, I have not been doing it for very long, but like I can't get enough of it now. <laughs> Again, everybody, I can't recommend it. If you are not familiar with Nick and Modulus Props, I highly recommend you go to his website, check it out, and it's basically the, is the name of your company, ModulusProps.com. ModulusProps.com. Com. Yep. He also is on Instagram. And again, people, if you just start to look at his work, uh, I saw Nick at Emerald City Comic Con, last, was it last year? Yeah. It was last year. Yeah. And Nick had a gun that he built from Borderlands, it was the, what was uh, it? What was it called? I, I don't know if it had some crazy name or it was You just, did, you, it, was a, it was a big ass machine gun. It was yeah, a character's name. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Nick was like, oh yeah, I built this thing in Hamashan, he went to show me. And I looked at this thing, I was like, holy cow. It was like, <laughs> it was a beautiful replica of this machine gun, but it was kind of altered twist because it's based on the video game. But the level of detail was insane, Nick. I have to say, well done, it oh, was thank amazing. You. Thank you, I Sometimes I feel like I spend more time than I should like <laughs> painting something and detailing it but you know it's once it's done it's like you're you're so proud of having done that thing and it's it's the kind of thing like uh, I've heard Bill at Punished Props say this where he'll finish something and he'll just put it on his nightstand so he can look at it every night before he goes to bed <laughs> I do that a lot with the stuff I make and, th and that is the thing I always ask people people uh, I've had people in uh, my YouTube channels and uh, live streams Live streams, they come to see Ted. How long did that take you? I'm like, well, what are you are you asking? How long did it take me? Or how long is it going to take you? I always tell people, it's not. It takes as long as it takes. Yeah. You put in what you want to. I bumped into people who have costumes, and I'm always like, that's amazing. And they, yeah, it took me six months to build it. Like I can tell because the level of detail you put into something. 
and I came from the movie industry where we didn't have that luxury of time, so we all had to work really, really, really fast. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I like is like doing the stuff for myself now is bringing the joy back of taking your time and building something the way you want to and taking the time. And when you, of course, I'm going to throw pictures of the gun in chat here and, and um, on the videos that look at this gun. You can see that this was a passion project. When you built it, you're like, oh, okay, I want to make this as accurately as possible. So when I held the gun, I was like, what does this mean? Oh, it's foam. Mm -hmm. So amazing. Yeah, and I, I'm definitely a builder who takes his time making stuff. The um, last year I put together a samurai stormtrooper costume. Mm -hmm. Helmet, full suit of armor, uh, rifle, the whole you know the whole deal, deal, and it took maybe eight or nine months from start to finish. So, not continuously, but you know since I worked during the day, and then I would come home in the evenings and weekends and work on this thing. But it was just months and months of work. Nice. Now, out of uh, this is kind of still your early stages of building. What are things uh, on your list that you wanted that some days you would like to tackle? Like, what are some people always ask me what's your favorite project and I always tell them it's what I'm working on at the time yeah exactly the thing that you finished last is often it's always your, your favorite your favorite um, but I, is there something on a list that you want to make down the road yeah that you what, done? my the big project I've been thinking about and I sort of started it um, and I've been working on it slowly is uh, if you guys know the movie fifth element I'm sure a lot of you do uh, Ted, you have some yeah. <laughs> some relationship to that movie. Yes, I have. I was I built a flying cab and did multiple miniatures on that feature film. Yeah, yeah awesome, 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 cool stuff. It's it's such a visual, like the designs in that film are just so amazing. And, and it's still, I watched it recently again. It just the level of work of everything in that movie was so right down to Corbin Dallas's apartment. The things in the wall mm -hmm. and the, the just all the weird details of like when the cop comes by you have to put your hand in circles it was like yeah all these little nuances of detail this is all this stuff they had nothing to do with the story right but just built the world the universe yeah just all these crazy parts of that universe so at the beginning of that film uh the mandashiwan i think is how they say it in the film it's the big sort the big of gold guys yeah, yeah the big gold which uh, you they're amazing and you yeah they built these and you barely see them Right, yeah, they're only at the beginning of the film for, for not very long, but uh, that's kind of been my, my dream project is to build Oh, so you, you actually make a suit? I would make a suit. I would do the full suit. Now, there's a lot to figure out because it's a big suit. I think the, the movie used suits were maybe oh, eight feet tall. It, it was weird because they built them, and they, you see in bits and pieces of them, but they don't really get a shot of people standing next to them. But if you see some behind-the-scenes photos of them on set, yeah. they're giant. They're giant. The actors in those suits, I think, were probably seven feet tall. So... Those characters, if you were to build that costume, you would make them out of foam. I think I would want to do it out of foam. I think the, the screen use costumes they made out of oh, fiberglass. Oh, yeah, of course they did. That's how yeah. Hollywood does everything. Right, so big, heavy, hot, right? So, something that wouldn't be feasible to take to a convention. No. So I would need to make figure out a way to do it a lot lighter, and of course, foam would make probably a lot of sense for that. Now, that, that's one of your dream projects. Now, all of the things you built right now, what is one of your favorite things you have that you built? Uh, my favorite full costume, I would say, is still the, the Samurai Storm. Oh, my goodness. Friend. When I saw it, I knew immediately what it was from because Bandai, the toy company, mm -hmm. made a line of toys and took the classic Star Wars. And they got the license for it, too. Yeah. Yeah, Bandai had the license to do these Star yeah. Wars toys. So they did their own mashup of taking Samurai Warriors and mix mashing them with the, the Star Wars universe. And Nick did a spot-on Stormtrooper. Thanks. Yeah, that, that, was, that was a fun costume to build. And it was... I saw that figure and I, I had that same thought that a lot of people have, which is I have to build that, <laughs> like turn this, you know, the six inch figure into a full size costume. Now, again, how helpful was it to actually have a figure to go off of? It was great because I could basically what I did is I took some close up photos of it and then I could bring that into my computer, into uh, Illustrator or whatever and, and draw patterns. Now, is, is Illustrator the same as Inkscape? Can you use kind of the same I thing? think they're similar. Yeah, yeah, you can use them for, for similar sorts of things, drawing patterns and then right. able to print those out, scale them up to whatever size I needed and then print those out and work from that. And definitely again guys, uh, when I refer to Inkscape as a program, it's a free program you can get uh, and I will leave links below the video. Uh, Bill Duran sells a great... Uh, Tutorial video tutorial breaks it down step by step on how to use the Inkscape because I got that I'm still working on it because I like Inkscape and I want to learn more about it but definitely I'll put that below the video so you guys can definitely know. Um, Nick I will let people know too that you also make product you make things I do yes so kind of how I got started when I was talking about uh, the psycho mass right. 
so that was the first thing I sculpted, and then from there I sort of got interested in, in masks. So that sort of became my, my thing for a while, is, is making masks. Uh, a lot of them from video games, you know, sort of just whatever I was into at the time. Uh, so from a few different video games, I made some masks. Uh, a couple things from some comic book books. A lot of obscure sorts of things where I would just see a design that I really liked and want to turn that into a, a real physical thing. Now, by doing that, did you say, hey, since I'm making these, I should make these available to the public? I did, yeah. So, and I, I did that from the very beginning, just not really intending to sell them, but I wanted to go through the process. Okay. So when I made my first mask, the Psycho Bandit mask, you know, I'd been just sort of eating up all this, like the the tutorials and, right. and you know, build videos that I could find and was watching people go through the process of doing like silicone molds and all that. And I just wanted, because I was so interested in the materials and the process, I wanted to try it. So I, I did that, so I made a mold. It wasn't, wasn't a pretty mold, of course, <laughs> the first one I made, but after I had that mold, I realized, well, you know, I, I made one, did a, a, a resin, like a slush cast, right. resin pour, and then after I did that, I figured, well, if I can do one, I might as well do a few more you know, threw them up on eBay or Etsy or whatever and did that. So it's, I've been kind of building this little collection of, of masks that I've sculpted. Uh, and, he, and he's also being very modest, but again, there's, uh, he has a store, again, at mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, he has all these masks that he's been doing. He has a lot of great pieces, and I got to see some of his stuff. I got really excited. I don't know why I didn't bring it up. I bought one of your masks at, um, how's that? Ren, Ren, Rencon. Yeah, Rencon, Renton City Comic Con. Oh, wait, thank you. Who was that? Was, uh, just for the Palmo. Thank you, Jinx, who's hosting. Thank you, Jinx. All right. What's up, Jinx? You know Jinx. Jinx. Yeah, hey, Jinx. <laughs> um, so, again, on your web, you have these masks. And a lot of, I, again, I'm sorry, I'm not much of a video game player, but a lot of these beautiful masks are from particular games. Did you do Games that you'd like. Games that I like. Games where I really appreciate the, the visual style and design. So the one that you have actually is from a game called Dishonored. So I've done a couple masks now from this game series, this Dishonored game series right so you guys are dishonored fans definitely go to his website check them out because they're these beautiful masks i was like wow this is amazing where's it from never seen it but it's amazing so <laughs> that's from that that was cool um in this great building world there's people that we always like see and go oh my god it's amazing is there any particular builders out there that you like kind of are blown away by or like would want to like build up to or like work with or collaborate with something. Yeah, well, actually, I just did a collaboration with, so I've always been a fanboy of our buddy Stephen K. Smith. So. Yes, Stephen, and guys, if you're not familiar with it, I'll, I'll definitely have links for this below the video. Stephen is known for his guard from... Uh, yeah, it, his Theron guard. Theron guard. What, is that, what game is that from? That's from the... Uh, that's from Gears of War. Gears of War game, and he built this Theron guard, yeah. which I was, I guess, really impressive. And when I saw a figurine, the toy of what that was, I'm like, oh my God, that's it. He, like... Yeah, he nailed, nailed it. He oh totally my gosh, he nailed it. that character. Yeah, and he's he does a lot of large, amazing, like larger than life costumes. So I've. Um, oh look, guys! Wait, really quickly. He, uh, SKS is in chat. Oh hey, hey what's up, Steve? <laughs> hey, How you Steve. doing, man? Uh, yeah, he his stuff is all great, and he's actually been working recently on something called Wasteland Alice. Oh my yes, and that is something. Wasteland Alice is actually something. It's a it's a public domain character because it's been around so Steven designed his own world mm -hmm. that it basically it's his and he has yeah. a book he's got cars he's got figures and characters yeah yeah designing a whole world a whole bunch of characters uh, a bunch of us have actually been building costumes for these characters right and remember you guys did the car guards yeah the car guards there were four of us at Emerald City Comic Con uh, a few weeks ago and we made these car guard costumes and it was a lot of fun running around and these costumes. Yes, that was amazing because I was able to jump in on that and get some couple, couple pictures, which you'll see right here. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And uh, they did another group at uh, C2E2, which unfortunately I couldn't make. That's in Chicago, which is mm. where I'm from, but I couldn't get back up there for that con. But they did a group at C2E2, and we'll have some more later this year. We're going to do a group at Dragon Con. Nice. So that'll be fun. Dragon Con is, uh, it's, a few uh, people have not experienced Dragon Con. What I like about DragonCon is that it's so huge, they don't advertise, uh, they don't advertise, and the, um, 
there's videos out there which I think about making one myself about what to do to get prepped for your first time if you ever is your first time going to Dragon Con. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's prep videos for that because what I suggest is get a lot of sleep and drink a lot of water. Yeah. Hydrate. <laughs> Hydrate. Yeah, it's, it's basically just a continuous party. Giant party. Just a giant costume but, party. But the builders that go there are just all A-listers and they all bring their A-game costumes. Yeah. When I was there, I was like, I was walking around and I'm like, oh my God, I'd see an amazing costume and I would try, oh my God, and I'd go to pull my camera to take a picture of it and if you don't get them at that time, you better get them because they're not going to wear that. Te- they're going to wear something else tomorrow. Right. So, well, plus it's so huge. If you see them go by and you miss them, you probably won't see them again just because they might be anywhere. And you think, oh, I'll find them again because they're so huge. And no. Yeah. You no. Won't. No. They're, they're, they're gone. You've lost them. You've lost them forever. <laughs> right. Um, but with that being said, so who is the person that you you said you were collaborating with uh, Stephen K. Smith so that was one yeah. of the missions you wanted to do that, yeah that was that was a fun collaboration I mean it wasn't really a collaboration it was you know he did all the design work so yeah, it's so really just me duplicating his one of his designs and it's fun I always like this something that's um, when I'm building something I like to have fun with it and kind of embellish on some of these designs but if, if you're working from a drawing I always fun it's fun to work from a drawing because therefore you have to interpret it a lot of stuff because yeah. it's a comic book or something drawn in, and to bring it to the real world is always fun too as well totally yeah fascinating um, there is a, oh wait let me get a sip of my Good coffee idea. but uh, really quickly everybody let me check my time excellent uh, what we do here in coffee talk is uh, for the first half hour I ask him questions or ask my guest questions but now we're here on twitch uh, .tv slash Evil Ted Smith is where we're doing the uh, coffee talk from. We're going to take uh, questions from chat. So everybody who's here today, if you guys have questions, not, uh, I know a lot of people have questions sometimes from me, but since I have a special guest, Nick, try to direct the questions to Nick because Nick is here for today. I'm here all the time. So if you guys have questions from me, I'm here every Monday and Tuesday. So. And if I can't answer your question, I'm sure Ted can. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, everybody, we're really going to take this opportunity to take questions from chat. So, guys, definitely, yeah, come throw, on in. Throw any questions our way. Got Victoria so cosplay. Hey, Ted and Nick, uh, I'm about to looking into ordering uh, Creature Cast from my first uh, from my first time. Any suggestions on preferences? Tips? Uh, oh, tips, preferences. I've been coding and since following. The samurai uh, store. Oh, he's, she's followed the samurai. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, Gloria. Um, I can certainly give you some tips on creature cast. Go, because he's actually. I love it, but he works with it more than I have. Go. Yeah. So the the samurai stormtrooper. The all the armor was uh, coated in creature cast. So it's just all EVA foam that's been dremeled and shaped and then coated in, in creature cast. So what I would recommend, um, if you're trying it for the first time, you can apply it in two different ways. You can brush it on, and you can spray it. It's a little bit tricky to spray because it dries it, yeah. so quickly. It dries quickly and it's also very thin, which if you order it and you want, if you're ordering it with intentions of spraying it, you want to get the thickening agent. Yes, definitely. It's called, I think it's called Neofix. Neofix. So on the CreatureCast website, you can find it. So uh, I would recommend getting uh, maybe the, he has it in different uh, hardnesses too. I like the semi rigid. Yeah, the semi rigid is what I use. There's a rigid, a semi-rigid, and then a flex, and a super flex. So right. there's four grades. If you're just coating foam with it, it probably doesn't make a huge difference in what hardness you use. But the semi-rigid is, is pretty good. Uh, if you brush it, it'll, and then you add the thickener, you will get brush marks. But right. the nice thing is you can sand it. That you can. And I, uh, the last times I've used I use it for my Viking helmet. I use it for the... Uh, and I use it for my shoulder piece. What I like about when you brush it is if you're doing something medieval and you have a texture on your armor already, just brush it on. Don't, the foam, you don't have to put a pre-sealant on it. You just go raw foam and creature cast. It soaks into it and yeah. it bites and it's super strong. It bites. It's really good stuff. Yeah, and it's so easy to paint too, I'll also mention. Oh yeah, it grabs paint yeah, well. You don't need to prime it. Just put acrylic paint right over it. The acrylic paint will bond right to the rubber. It does, it sticks hard. Yeah. It does. So. What I did for the samurai, and um, this is probably the process I would use for my next costume, is the creature cast right over the foam. Okay. So it's the TNT cosplay foam that I that I used for the samurai, which is great foam. I think we all are aware of TNT yeah, cosplay. Yeah, cosplay, it's great foam. Yeah, if you need foam, go there. Uh, the neoprene, I usually do a couple layers brushed 
over the foam and then I'll, if I want it to be smooth, then I'll spray a few layers because right. that'll kind of even it out a little bit. So wait, so you brush, do a brush base? Yeah. And then spray on top of that? Yeah, one or two layers brushed on just to make sure I can dab it into all the corners. Yeah, because you're, you're, cause the, uh, the summer had a lot of nooks and crannies on it. It did, yeah. Okay. So just to make sure I had full coverage, uh, brush it on, spray a few layers on, build up maybe six or seven coats, and then just paint right over the top of that and not necessarily even need to seal it just because the paint sticks so well to the neoprene. So that's that's basically it. So not a lot of layers, not super complicated. Yeah, because the Creature Cast, the thing I like about it is that you don't have to put it on thick. Mm -hmm. It uh, it does soak in, and so it adds a, a rigidity to the uh, the foam, makes it like armor, which is nice. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, hold on. Uh, oh, yeah, we got we got really quick. <clears throat> Again, everybody, uh, Recycled Rainbow, uh, my super mod, is putting links for Nick in chat. So if you guys want to check out his site, you can definitely check him out. Thank you so much, Recycled Rainbow. Um, again, somebody asked about, right, is that TT Cosplay Foam is just the density and the quality. And one thing about their foam that I like so much is not only is it dense, that it it takes heat. You can heat shape it really well. Yeah, because most foams you don't can do as well. I did a lot of heat shaping on that on that samurai trooper just to get all the the curves of the armor. And right, and you can pull and stretch it quite a bit, and really it holds up. Yeah, and it also dremels very well. I do a lot of shaping with the rotary tool, and the TNT foam is is great for that. Because once you break it, it's not much of a skin to it. It's the it's the consistent it's the consistent density all the way through. Yeah. So it takes very little. Like once right. you break it, uh, usually with cheaper foam, you'll Dremel or sand edge, and there's big air bubbles in it. Yeah, and not so much with TNT. Right, or it'll start to tear. Sometimes the foam mats, once you start digging into it with the right. rotary tool, it'll, it'll just tear. start tearing up. Uh, but the TNT stuff is is great for that. Oh, hold on. It says uh, no spaceship. Says does creature cast peel like poly latex sixty around the edges? Um, it I, it does. It can a little bit. So I had um, some spots where. Like I have uh, some spots that uh, go against my elbow, right. and it gets a little sweaty in there. Right. So where it would, where the creature cast would rub against my arm or against the undersuit I had under right. the samurai suit, it would get a little wet from the sweat, right. and that would sort of start to work it away. So it, it can peel around the edges. One thing I've been wanting to try, which I know you guys will use for the Poly Latex 60, is oh he's asking about. Oh no, Creature Cast like Polylectic 60. So yeah, yeah, sometimes I know Bill does this. He'll put down a layer of barge right. and then the Polylatex 60 over the, the top of that. that the funny thing was when you were done, was I was follow up with that too. With Polylatex yeah. 60, what I do is when I make my costumes, always I coat the entire suit, but anything I know it's going to, over years of making costumes, we all learn where it's going to wear the most. You got around your wrist, around your forearms, elbows, anything that's going to get rubbing, uh, ankles, uh, feet, mm -hmm. edges of shoes. Anything you know it's gonna wear and tear. What I do is I uh, bar, I put barge on really heavy on it, let it dry, put polylatex 60 on top of that, and then when I, and then when the polylatex 60 is dry, I take a brush and go back in and ladle thick coats of latex in the back sides to really beef up those edges because yeah. you know that they're gonna peel over time. So even with the costume, I'll do like six, seven coats on the costume itself, but all the edges when it's all dry, I'll go back in and brush heavier, thicker coats. And sometimes, like on shoes or ankles, I'll, I'll reinforce it with fabric. I'll put a cut, a cut a piece of spandex, glue behind that, and then put latex on top of that. Yeah, and I have not tried that method with the creature cast, but I suspect it oh, would work I, just I, as well. I'm pretty sure it would too, yeah. yes. That's, yeah. But that's a great question. That, that, was, a good really question. Good. that was a good question. Um, it wasn't, uh, check out um, but uh, I see uh, M, M. Luder was saying, uh, here we are, uh, Wizard World in Portland this weekend. Yeah, so that's there are I think a bunch of cons going on this weekend, and one was one up in Portland, which you know I'm not at right now, but there's Wizard <laughs> World in Portland was this weekend too, which, oh, okay. I, which I missed. Yeah, I have not done Wizard World yet. I uh, again, everybody, Nick and I, uh, we love cons. Again, everybody, if people always ask us, hey, we'd love to have you come to a con. The greatest way to do that is have you guys write to the cons and say we'd like these people here. What's happening over the time is that uh, they get a lot of voice actors and celebrities, which they are, they draw, but you can get those people at every con. And uh, I'm, tr I'm really hoping the cons start growing onto the maker community and the builders like ourselves that a lot of fellow builders out there, we all want to meet each other. Mm -hmm. And the best way to do is to get us each other to go to cons. So yeah. if you guys want us at a con, definitely write your local con and say we'd love to have Nick and Ted as guests mm -hmm. at our con. So it's a great way to, that's a great way of doing it. Yeah. Well, Nick, uh, this has been a blast. We're, uh, 
I um, our coffee talk usually just runs for like about an hour. Mm-hmm. But since we're here, I have some burning questions I want to ask you. Okay. I already know the answer to one of them. All right. You ready? Hit me. Here you go. Coffee or tea? Oh, coffee, of course. They, they got that right there. <laughs> now, DVD at home or a movie theater? Ooh, that's a tough one. Lately, DVD at home. Uh, Blu-ray at home. Okay. I, I'm all about the movie theater. I like the experience. Yeah. Um, uh, on an airplane, aisle seat or window seat? I like the aisle seat, so if I need to get up, I can go move quickly. Uh, um, oh, God, it's like... This eat, is like the lightning round. Right, right? yeah. It's uh, <laughs> eat breakfast or skip breakfast? I like to eat breakfast when I can, at least something something quick. Maybe it's just a piece of toast, something simple at least. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Yeah, say. and they do, and I, I'm like you, and I, I, I'm kind of weaning off. I, I usually have it later. Like, I'll get up and do all my stuff, and then... Yeah. Like around late in the day, I'll end up having it. Although I will point out, in Portland, brunch is huge. So if it's the weekend and you want to sleep in and then go have some some food, okay, they've got you covered for brunch. Okay, wait for this. Yeah. Uh, fifteen minutes early or fifteen minutes late? Early, always. Right. Always early. Always early. Yeah. It's like I I always tease people like people like ah oh, yeah even though they say early I know them for a fact that I'm not always late but yeah. um, the I. Okay. Oh, do you also do you wake up early or you sleep up? Do you wake up early or do you wake up late? Uh, kind of in between. I'm not an early riser, but I don't I don't sleep in. Yeah, I I'm a morning person. If I was younger and somebody told me I was gonna be a morning person, I would have told them they're lying. But now I love the morning. I'm like, <laughs> like five or six a.m. I'm up. I'm yeah, up. Yeah. But then again, I go to bed like nine thirty, ten. So. Yeah, no, I'm more of a, I, I like to work late into the evening. Okay, so you're, yeah. are you nocturnal based? I'm a little more nocturnal than, than early morning, yeah. So I'll, I'll work late and then kind of sleep in. Oh, let's see what, uh, oh, uh, people are saying, okay, this is a great one from chat. No Spaceship says, no Spaceship's asking, waffles mm. or pancakes? That's another tough <laughs> one. I'm going to have to go with the waffle. Uh, that's so funny. Oh, wait, says, uh, somebody asked a question, goes, uh, Mutter says, couldn't agree more with Wizard World and is necessary. Evil have I forgotten their t- their roots. Mm. Oh, they, so they said they're doing the same thing in Wizard World? Yeah, it's what's happening is that I have a, there's a con I used to go to, and they used to invite me, and they stopped inviting me because they started taking the money away from the cosplayers and the builders and started dumping it towards celebrities and voice guests. Yeah. And I kind of try to tell the con people, like, but you're, you're taking away what makes the con unique is because those people go to every con. Mm-hmm. Every con you go to, you can see the same people. They just travel, to the, you know, they just say, and so every major con has them. Yeah. So these people aren't really rare to see. So if you have local people in your area that are huge, like have huge fan base and followers, you should bring builders there, makers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so a lot of people know that, but a con, the cons don't seem to catch on yet. So, But there's cons popping up every corner, so hopefully in time. Yeah, yeah. I think there'll be more. TNT Cosplay is asking, Pineapple or no <laughs> pineapple on pizza? <laughs> pineapple or okay? okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I could eat it if it was there. I'd eat it, but I wouldn't order it. I think in college I had a lot of pizza with with pineapple on it, but these days I would probably say no, no pineapple. I like how everybody's just chiming on these questions. They're like that. They're where we're going with these questions. It's right, like, right. These are the easy ones to uh, ask and answer. Mm-hmm. You guys, Nick also is on Twitch. So that's Twitch slash TV Modulus Props? Yeah, Modulus Props. Uh, I don't stream as much as Ted. Maybe once a week or so I try. Thursday evenings Definitely. is often you yeah. can, when you can catch me. Oh, did Big Chicky have a question? Oh, Big Chicky had a question. I feel like I'm being ignored. Big Chicky, nobody's ignoring you. We're just, we don't see it. <laughs> it goes by too quick. It goes by, you gotta understand, guys. Chat flies. Bill or Ted. And he says, just kidding. Oh, okay, get it. Uh. <laughs> I see. I know who you are. I like them both equally. Yeah, see, yeah. right, exactly. I love everybody. Yeah. yeah There's yeah. one thing I love that I'll say to bring up on this, on this coffee talk is that it's a friendly community, and that's one thing I liked about this. Unlike the movie industry, it's very cutthroat, and people keep secrets, and everybody's, in, everybody's, try, everybody's trying to steal each, steal each other's jobs. It's just, this is a friendly, fun building community. That's one thing I liked about this when I started it. I'm like, wow, there's no competition is that everybody's really friendly and everybody wants to share their ideas and techniques. I'm like, this is an amazing world. I want to be a part of it. So, oh, here we go. Marvel or DC? Oh, man. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I guess I'll go Marvel on that one. Again, I'm not much of a comic book fan. As a kid growing up, I loved all the underground comics like Ninja Turtles and like I fell into Japanese uh, like Akira and like yeah. all these like Japanese comic books. But um, I like um, I think I like Batman. I think Batman is a cool character. But then I like Spider Man, and that's that's DC. Isn't it? Um, are they both DC? No, Spider Man's Marvel. Spider Man's Marvel. Right. See, so it's back and forth. Yeah. So it's hard to say. But oh, Big Chicky says, when you brush on creature cast, does it leave brush strokes? Uh, I I never had problems with it because it's so thin when it comes out of a jug that I just brush it in. It soaks in the foam. I maybe do two coats, and I'm good. Um, but if you want it now, this again, this is I don't get heavy brush strokes. But if you're doing something that you want to be high techy, like a robot or something smooth, there will be a, there's possibilities of getting brush strokes. You just got to be if you guys want to eliminate brush strokes, you got to get a spray gun. I will say if you if you thicken it because I like to thicken it a lot because then I can lay it on heavier and, and let it settle. Yeah, and if you thicken it a lot and brush it on thick, then yes, you can get brush marks. Right. Especially as you build up layer after layer, you'll get some brush strokes. I want to thank everybody for hanging out today. Nick, thanks for hanging out. Yeah, thank you, Ted. It was a it was a blast being here. Yeah, it was. So Coffee talk was great. Every I appreciate chat chat some great questions. Again, everybody. Uh, this Coffee Talk is done live from my live stream, which is twitch.tv slash Evil Ted Smith. Uh, I stream every Monday and Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Times. But uh, this is a new installment, Coffee Talks. My friend Nick from Modulus Props. Definitely give him a follow. Check out his website. He makes amazing products, and he sells stuff. And hopefully you'll be able to see more of his cool stuff at your local con. All right, guys. Thanks so much, and I'll catch you back next time right here on Coffee Talk.